Today, I'm uploading a video backed by popular demand, and that's how to fast track your Super 8 color grade. This is just the basics. I'll put some tastemaker things in there for those who like the nuances of the Super 8 footage. But first, we gotta do something about this. This quarantine has got me watching babies and I'm getting a little rough. All right, first things first, we're gonna drag and drop our media into our media pool here in DaVinci Resolve 15. This is the demo version, I didn't pay for it, but I did pay for one plugin, we'll get into that. Now, this color grade is fast, simple, and easy, all because we only use three steps. Repeat after me, one, two, three steps. Three steps, guys. Any software you use, any non-linear editor that you use, it's only three steps, and they are get the silver. We're going to convert the color picture into a black and white picture and adjust the contrast until we get an image that we're pleased with. Two is we're going to manipulate the color to get the saturation and the pop between all the colors that are embedded in the negative out. And then the last thing we're going to do is adjust our sharpness so we can really define the edges of the silver highlight crystals that are embedded in this format that we all love to use. And it's easy. It, t it usually takes you 10, 15 minutes depending on how fast your PC is. I'm deciding to use a very slow PC so I could demonstrate to you that it doesn't take a lot of time to get a good image when you shoot super eight. Now let's jump into it. I'm over here clicking on the edit panel just to drag and drop the clip into the timeline. Now, if you wanted to do a thorough job, this is where you'd separate each individual shot with your blade or cut tool, all right? But we're not gonna do this for the purpose of this edit. I'm just gonna select the frame, give me a reference point when I get into the color panel, and you see me doing that right here. Click right into the color panel, and then we're going for the grade. We're going here, adjusting the nodes, making sure everything is neat. I'm going to hit option S to get my three nodes. Option S, remember, black and white, just the contrast. Second node is for color. Third node is for sharpness and detail. Hit the primaries, get into the wheels, go down to the bottom of the screen, take the satch around, slap it down to zero. Now we're going to go into the curves. We're going to take the black point, which is the low end of the linear curve, and slide it on over till we get the sprocket hole to be referenced black. You see over here in the waveform monitor, we want that little information as the sprocket hole to hit zero. Some people take the bottom of the information that's in the waveform and put that at zero. Whatever your cup of tea is, it gives you a little bit more contrast, but the blacks fall off a lot faster when you use the information as your black point. Do the same for the white point. That's in the top right corner. Slide it onto the left, and now you got yourself an image that's in between the lines. What are the lines? For most line linear editing systems, it's 80 IRE and 20 IRE. In DaVinci Resolve, it gives you it in samples, so it's somewhere around 600 samples and 200 samples. That's where you want the information pie to be at, all right? And then, then you can really separate all that data through your color and all your information, because it's there. If you, are, if you smash it down to the bottom, the information's gone. So let's get a good sandwich in the middle. Now you see how this curve, this linear curve is starting to resemble what we call the characteristic curve of film, the sensitometry curve. It kind of looks just like it. You see it there? It looks kind of looks just like it. You want it to look a little bit like that. It, it depends on wh what you do creati creatively, but this is just a base grade. You can get your creative grade later. Do this one for your base. Now we're jumping into the color panel. After we bring the saturation back on that black and white node, Go back into the bottom of the screen, adjust the saturation back to 50, and get into your RGB mixer on the second node. Now this is how I adjust my saturation, all right? It gives you a little bit more control. I pump it 1.33. To me, that's 33%, right? Every output, red, green, and blue, is adjusted to 1.33. 
leave the rest at zero because those will fine tune the color correction. So you can see that my image is a little green heavy. So I'm going into the green output and I'm gonna take the blue channel and the red channel and the green output and slowly bring them down, probably 0 0.05, 0 0.07 on the red channel and that should balance out my waveform. Pay attention to the waveform because that's gonna give you all the information you need to balance the image using the RGB mixer and the outputs, okay? But pay attention, thing will turn white. You see how the top of the waveform is green? When you do it right, it goes white, all right? I want you to say it, when you do it right, it goes white, all right? So after you reference your source monitor here in the program, in the nonlinear editor, and then you look at your waveform monitor, of course it's gonna be a little green heavy because there's a lot of foliage in the shot, but we kind of got it balanced. Saturation is good. I think the final decision I made on my saturation, because this image to me is still looking kind of thirsty, still looking like it could get a little life in it, I went up to what, 66%. 0.166 on the red output, 0.166 on the green output, and 0.166 on the blue output. No Illuminati, it's just the way it is. I go 33%, 66%, 100%. If it doesn't work that way, I go 25, 50, 75, 100. I always get multiples of some common denominator. All right, moving right along. Moving right along, I wanna go right back into the primary wheels. And there, I'm going to take the contrast. Remember, the second node is color information, so we want those colors to pop. How do we get that done? We adjust the contrast. And when you use the contrast slider here, it mainly focuses on a logarithmic curve of the mid-tone value. So that's all those colors that were properly exposed are gonna get a chance to shine and pop. Then, after you get a value that you like, I think I selected, what, 1.667, and it rounded it up to 1.68. I'll move on to the third node. Who remembers what it is? Detail and sharpness. Get into the sharpness thing here down the bottom. You see all these little icons? One is for sharpness and blur. Click on the second bubble, it goes blur and sharpening, all right? You go down, it sharpens. You go up, it blurs. Don't get heavy handed on this parameter. It doesn't take much to start to see the sand. The sand is the grain that's embedded into the negative of the film. It doesn't take much to see the sand. I think I went down to 0.44 from 50. That's six points and I can really see the grain that's embedded in this image. After you see the sand, guess what? You're done. Start scrolling through the footage, making sure some shots are all balanced. Some might be too dark, some might be too bright. That's when you go back into the edit, chop those bad boys up and do them individually, okay? Now, basically we're it. We can, we can go and we can get this thing delivered. We can export, but I'm gonna give you a bonus. Now that we got the sand and all the grain, now that we can see the granulity of our negative, let's manage it. More control is good for the soul. I got a plugin from Neat Video, okay? It's easy to use, it helps me reduce the noise, all right? Cost me $279 to get it done in DaVinci Resolve. They do have cheaper options. If you don't, can't, if you can't, don't, do, it's not necessary, it's a bonus, okay? This program requires you to make a sample size in some part of the image that doesn't have a lot of information. I chose the upper left corner of this frame because it gives me a good profile of what the noise looks like in this image. After that, you click Build Profile up in the upper left corner, and it does the work for you. That's why I like the plugin. It also allows you to click on the General tab. You see where my mouse is? The General tab will allow you to get a preview of how many frames it will render per second. You wanna have at least one frame on a crappy system, okay? If you don't have at least one frame, your GPU processor or your CPU processor will probably crash and stop the render and say, hey buddy, you need to go to Best Buy and get yourself a better machine, all right? I can't do what you asked me to do. You need to give me RAM or you need to give me a video card. So make sure you get at least one frame. How I get one frame, this one only gave me 0 .07. So I need to find my one frame. I went to the temporal tab of the temporal noise reduction and I only selected sample one frame before my sample frame and one frame after. That got me my one frame per second. 
on my crappy machine. Because Eugene's not going to Best Buy because he doesn't have a whole bunch of money. I wasted it all on the neat video plugin. Okay? So now that we have that, noise is gone, wiped out. All the noise that it found in that little sample area wiped out of my image. Some of you are like, dude, why'd you do that? Super 8 needs to be pure. It needs to be preserved for all the beauty and the grain that it gives you. I have that control now just by adjusting the opacity of my clip. So in DaVinci Resolve, the right side, the blur and sharpening panel, you have what you call the, the key, alpha key. But the key output here, you can adjust the opacity of that noise reduction channel, okay? So if you like a lot of grain, keep it at 100. You don't like as much grain, take it down to 33%. It's whatever you want. You can take the beautiful things about film and keep all of it, and you can take the nasty things about film and mix it. It's up to you. Mix it to taste. Not everybody likes their steak medium rare, okay? Some people like it raw, some people like it burnt. Moving right along to the export settings, I like to do a 720 output for Super 8. I like to go in and make sure that I have multiple passes. I boost all these settings to high. Don't use any of my proxies or optimized media to create my image. And that's basically it. I'm gonna name this puppy and I'm gonna export this puppy. And you're gonna see what it looks like at the end of this video. But in, while I got your attention, buddies, all right? All right, film club members, Listen to this. There's going to be a full write-up in what I'm doing and why I'm doing it on the Film Club America's website. You get there, you type in filmclubamerica.com forward slash alpha, the letter A, forward slash the letter A. I promise you, you'll get to the Film Club of America's website. Get to the blog, look for this write-up. I'll put a link in the description just so I know you can get to it. But the, the forward slash A, the A stands for America and awesome. Because that's what we're trying to do for Super 8 small gauge filmmaking. We also do some stuff in Super 16. All right. So now as you see, let's get back to the content. Now you see me saving it to my desktop so I can find it. And um, uh, before I get you out of here, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about synthetometry and why this three-step process works so well for Super 8 film. Check this out. So when you order your Super 8 film, it has this thing in the product specifications and description. This centrometric curve, this is the actual, what you can do and what you, the latitude of the film. So if you really want your film to render properly, it's a good idea to take the color out and just concentrate on one of these lines. If you do it individually, you can go through the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, and film is cyan, magenta, in yellow, you could do a channel by channel, but you should have at least two and a half stops of underexposure, three and a half, four and a half stops of overexposure if you recreate the curve. It's that simple. That's why we did it. So enjoy the footage. Let me shut up and get out of here. Thanks for watching. God bless you. And get to the Film Club of America's website. Share the video. I don't care if you like it or subscribe it, but make sure people get the information. Peace out. This is Eugene. Goodbye. Keep shooting and stay awesome.